guys, welcome back to Critique the Community. Patrick Hall is alive. I'm here. here. Back in Puerto Rico. It's good to have they've you back. Missed, they've missed this set. <laughs> that's right, that's right. I think you did one critique with I Mike. did two. I did you one did with two. Keith, and okay. then I did one with Mike Kelly. And it's Mike's fault that today we're going to be critiquing cars again. Because everyone knows I know nothing about cars. And I know very little about cars. And so every time we do this, people are like, stop critiquing cars. You guys don't deserve to do this. And I think it's because Mike's going through some like F1 phase where like he's obsessed with like racing now. That is so weird to me that he likes F1. I, and he likes the planes. Maybe the cars make sense too. Yes, but he should, he should own a good car. Mike's car is the biggest piece of trash ever. What does he own? You're asking a it's non-car a, I think, guy. I think I he owns some garbage Mitsubishi where the bumper's falling off and everything. And I'm like, Mike, get an, if you care about cars, get a nice car. What are He's you doing? He's very frugal. He's, you know, he's setting a good example there. Yeah, I know, I know. But this is his fault. So anyway, we're gonna be critiquing cars today. But if you would like to be a part of the next critique, you can go to the link in the description below and you can start uploading your published images. We were talking about this earlier. I think this is a really interesting idea. So. The image must have been published in the past and you must have made money on it. It doesn't have to be a lot of money, but some amount of money. Either you were hired for the shoot or somebody, you know, you took a protest photo or anything, could be any kind of photo, and somebody reached out and said, we want to feature that image yeah. on our blog or news channel. And you or had to have made money. Yeah. You couldn't just give it to somebody. You can't put it on your own blog. This has to be like a magazine, newspaper, or other website, third party website ad campaign, something that has been published and you've made money on, your favorite shot, uploaded to the next critique. This should be interesting because we're gonna get a crazy range. There's no real genre here. Right. It's not gonna be like, does this belong in your portfolio or not? I mean, I guess we could hypothetical. Yeah, we could talk about that. Yeah. We could talk about that. But uh, it'll be interesting to see what people have been making money on. Yeah, so it's right. something totally different. Yeah, so upload those pictures right now. Let's get into this. This is the highest rated image. You will win a free tutorial on fstoppers.com slash store. You'll get a message uh, on fstoppers, uh, the direct message function on there. Uh, if you guys don't know what we're talking about, uh, the highest rated and one random winner from each critique gets a free tutorial from our store. Uh, you can head over to fstoppers.com slash store, check them out, dream about what you would choose if you could win. Are you ready to rate this image? I think so. Three, two, one, four stars, we agree. Um, so I was actually the one to to pick out the images for this critique, usually it's David. Um, this is a good shot, but it is far from, from my favorite. But you still won, don't worry. But um, but you picking out the images has nothing, nothing to do with this one. This is the community favorite. Yeah, yeah. So I'm, I'll see I'm your just, images that you yeah, picked I'm after this. Yeah, I'm just saying that even though this is a great shot, there are some other shots coming up that I think are significantly better than this shot. And this is one interesting thing because I feel like David tries to pick out a range so that you can see as many ratings as possible. Yeah. But then people get upset because some of the best images may not be picked. Yeah. You, on the other hand, you like to show the best images. So Definitely, that... I want to show the best images. And then I threw in some bad ones. Uh, we'll see the next one coming up in a second. I think there's just too much dead space on the bottom and the big shadow being cast across. I almost would like to zoom in. And the problem with this aspect ratio is the more you zoom in, you start to lose the road behind the car or you start to lose the flare. But, you know, I don't know. I just like seeing the car larger in the frame. But I know why this image is, is done the way that it is. But I just feel like, to me, it's almost got a little too much foreground road. And my eye keeps going to that shadow. But that might be the perfect place to put text if you were trying to build out an ad yeah, for this. Yeah, I, I agree completely. I think for your website, crop in a little bit, make it a little bit more about the car. Uh, the flare on the left side, I, I don't hate it, but I also don't love it. I would crop in a little bit and push the car over to the left, have a hint of that flare, but then have more of that curve in the road. Um, the other thing that's standing out to me a little bit is it feels like there's been a lot of shadow recovery in the mountains in the background. It just kind of feels HDR-ish and a little cheap Especially the mountains right above the car. Yeah. Yeah. And so um, it just kind of feels like some sloppy retouching, uh, which I'm probably the last person to complain about that because I have been getting hell on YouTube for, uh, for my editing skills when I did the... Uh, 
football, the football shoot. Yeah. You saw that, right? Parts of it. Yeah. I saw enough of it. What yeah. was the? I mean, listen. I'm not. I'm not saying that the shots were were great. But when we got into post, you know, one of the sponsors was Alien Skin, and I had to show some specific things. They wanted me to show like how to use borders or whatever. So. Okay. I put I put this ridiculous border on an image and I said this is too much like I wouldn't do this. And that was the top comments. Everybody was like keep me away from post processing software. He's ruining the photograph. My favorite is when you had a hand that was double cloned <laughs> somewhere. <laughs> yeah, that that was the one where I did the jujitsu photo shoot. I made another mistake in editing. Well, and that's why you lose a lot of the competition. All right, guys. Community gives this one 3.8 stars. Patrick, choose a number uh, 2 through 20. Uh, let's go 7. 7. When we get to number 7, you're going to get another tutorial. Let's move on. Now, I put this as the second image because, you know, it's two cars driving. We got the blurry road effect going on. But one is a little better than the other. Are mm. you ready to rate? Yes. I'm not going to tell you which one's better okay. than the other. You have to decide for yourself. Okay, I think I've decided. Three, two, two one. one. Two. Two stars, we agree. Um, you know, there's just... When you can flip back and forth between these two shots, I feel like there's so much to learn. One, you know, obviously we've got the Porsche versus the Hyundai. You know, I, I, that's, that's going to do a little bit. But I've seen some amazing... You know, every car brand... Hyundai still needs amazing yeah. images for their yeah. products. Um, the, this location is horrible compared to the first shot. The angle of the car is That's the is biggest horrible. one, I think. It, it doesn't like, show off anything. Yeah. And it's wonky, like it's kind of sitting sideways, and it looks like distorted, like it's shot too wide with the camera very close. Yeah, you've got, you've got overhead lighting, just harsh, direct sunlight. Look at the angular sunlight on the first shot but we're still retaining a lot of detail on that shadowed side of the car. This shot just looks like a snapshot. I mean, the only reason why I didn't give this one star is because I feel like, you know, they're shooting from a moving vehicle, I would assume, unless they made this motion in Photoshop. They got the camera low to the ground, so they're thinking about composition, but, you know, sometimes it's very helpful to see a great shot and a mediocre shot side by side that are similar so that you can really compare. And I assume on. we're going to see a lot of images that are highly retouched where the blur is fake. The blur might be fake and it's probably fake in the first shot, right? It could be. So I don't want people to think that you have to get this right in camera when the previous shot I don't think is done all in camera. Yeah, so for those of you who don't know, there's specific software out there that just blurs roads for images like this. And I don't remember, there, I think there's a few different ones, but there's one that's incredibly expensive. Uh, Blair Bunting was telling us about this crazy okay. software that like all it can do is blur roads. Um, and it was more than, you know, Photoshop. It was like thousands of dollars just for this one software. But anyway, it's way easier to shoot a stationary car and then blur the road and blur the wheels and post and get that perfect lighting. You know, you could even light the car if it's sitting still. Right. Um, so. But there are a lot of amazing photo shoots where they drive and shoot the absolutely. car real time. And we've all and seen, you've seen commercials. Commercials with where the they're doing video. it live. All right. So this uh, community rating 2.49. Moving on. It's a little generous, I think. Yeah, it's a little generous. So here's here's a shot that I think is better. Than the first I, shot. Yeah, I, without telling you I, what I'm going to rate it, I, I definitely like this. I don't know. I don't know if I should talk before we rate it, but <laughs> I will. I don't know that this is like a traditional car ad. This is something else. It's, it's, it's like a tire ad. Yeah, but it's really. I love this. All right, you ready? Yes. Three, two, one. I'm going the full five, the full shebang. Yeah, and I, I guess, for me, it always comes down to what's the difference between a four and a five, and for some for some reason, many times, it's just your personal preference. Like, yeah. this is, I think this is way more memorable than the first shot, and I gave the first shot a four, so I will give you that. This is, if I had to put it on a scale, it's like higher four for me. One thing that I'm trying to figure out, and again, you know, just, this is probably an aspect ratio straight out of the camera, but cropping the top a little bit and making it a little closer yeah. to 16 by 9 um, or even thinner 
could make it look even more cinematic. And I feel like the, the weakest part of this entire picture is the rafters on the top of the frame. I would agree with that. This almost has like a, a feel for like a video game or something. Like this is, this would be used, I know they would use CGI, but they, you know, it would be like your car's in for a tire change yeah, and you're yeah, about yeah. to leave, but like it's, a, it's got a lot of story to it. No, yeah. And you know how much I like story. You love story. Tell me what, what car this is, Patrick. This is an Audi. Yeah. <laughs> Don't zoom in. This is an Audi. Audi? I call it Audi, I don't Audi, know. Audi eh. RX5. <laughs> you zoomed in and you still got it wrong. I didn't quite zoom in because I couldn't figure out the iPad. It didn't do what I expected it to do. It says right there on the back it's an R8. R8, I got a number and a letter, right? <laughs> I don't know, I was going to say like a no, ZT5. You didn't. you didn't, all you got was R8. Right. There's no 5 in it. But there's, there's a no letter, X. there's a number, there's an 8. Yeah. 3.69. 3.69. This is a cool image. Assholes. I love what I love about this, going back just for a second, I love the, the play on the color, you know? So yes. many times people do red and then they'll do the blue or they'll do, you know, cyan. This is a pretty clean white light coming from the front. And I think this really plays out well because it, it retains the natural color of the car. Sometimes you color grade everything and you can't tell what the color of the car is at all because the lights are so... Yeah you know, push so in such a far direction, but I really like the, the red and the white. Are you ready? I think so. Three, two, one. So we, we both give it four. I feel like the, um, the background, the sky is super HDR-ish, you know, highlight recovery slider to a million looking. And I feel like if they, if they cut out the car, which would be relatively easy, they could add another sky in. And if it's I think not this, already. I mean, they may have. Well, then why does it look halo -y and weird? Like, look mm -hmm. at the very top of the car at that point up there. It looks like there's this little halo around the whole car. Well, wouldn't that suggest that they cut it out and they just used a different sky or backdrop? Well, if they, why would they cut it out and then add that weird feather along it? I mean, it's a perfectly straight car. If you're going to cut it out with the pen tool, feather with one pixel and it should look great but it's it's like feathered a lot so i see this little band of well, what are highlight. you suggesting that i i don't i, I for, you're I, almost suggesting that this was shot on location yes. and they should replace the sky yes but if it was shot on location it wouldn't have the feather so no no here's what i think happened i think the sky is blown out in the real shot and then they they highlight recovered the sky back and it's creating this little Halo. What I would like to see is the sky replaced entirely and maybe given a different color mood because I almost feel like the foreground and the sky are too similar, like in tones, and it doesn't, it kind of, I, you shouldn't go crazy. You shouldn't put like a blue sky in there or a purple sky in there, but I think I would just like to see a little bit of difference in tone. <laughs> I might say you're totally wrong and go the other direction and say that maybe something that's weird that's going on with this sky to me is that it's yellow when there's so much blue in the in the kind of a magenta. shadows. Yeah, there's this magenta blue color in the shadows that maybe I'd like to see more of that in the sky. I don't know. Well, I think that's kind of what I'm saying. Make the sky more blue. <laughs> I thought you said you wanted, you wanted... I don't mean like sunny blue, like clear blue sky blue. I just mean that... Something to make it stand out a little bit more. Maybe it's just an exposure thing. Maybe the sky needs to be pulled down just a touch. But what I do like about this is they put this in a, a location that would make sense. Absolutely. You know, if you had this on the freeway or you had this in the last location where it's like a garage, it wouldn't, you know. I mean, it could be cool. The garage, garage could be cool, but I like that they but put this, it. This is particularly nice. I mean... Notice the, the, the rocks on the left side and the right side. They have this like swooping U shape that's kind of, uh, you know, engulfing the car. I think it looks awesome. And then the fact that they still have mountains behind it. That's, it, this, it is like the perfect location. Does this car have three wheels or does it have four wheels? That's one wheel in the back or is the fourth wheel hidden? Well, <laughs> that's funny. Now that you say that, it does kind of look like an optical illusion, but... I, I'm almost 
A hundred percent sure it has four wheels. That's what's difficult about this type of vehicle is I'm not sure if it, it to me it almost sits weird, and I don't know if it's because that back wheel was turned the way that it is, but it makes the the vehicle look wonky. But this vehicle very easily could be wonky, <laughs> yeah, you know. Yeah. So if if it's a four wheel car, it looks strange to me. But if it's one wheel in the back, now you got you, me second guessing everything. <laughs> Would you turn that back wheel in and pivot it more like the front wheel hat, you know, like so you could see more of it straight on, or do you like the way that it shows the treads? Wait, what are you saying? You want to turn the wheel or turn the whole car? The back wheels don't turn in cars, Patrick. Oh, I don't. I mean, I don't know. That's how little I know about this vehicle. What you do you mean about this vehicle? How about every vehicle ever made? I don't know, they don't have and, cars. Or... And YouTubers do not say that actually the Porsche is capable of turning in two degrees. I know, I'm saying... I just, I know that with a normal car. Nobody's changing... This just seems like the type of vehicle where maybe there's a way, like, this is meant for strange conditions. Right. I don't know. Community gives it 3.43. Patrick's trying to save his ass by talking about turning back wheels. 30, 2, 1... So I'm in between a three and a four on this, but you went two I you're love, insane. I love the mood of this. I love the dead space, the composition. There's a lot going for it. I just feel like, I don't know what this car is, but it's like beat up and old, which has a purpose, but if you're a car photographer, I don't know that you would have a car like this in your portfolio. And if you did, it would be, go back to Blair Bunting. He has these like old race cars that look grungy and beat up, but at the time they were these, you know, supercars for their generation. This just looks like a movie poster for Netflix or for some kidnapping show or something, mm -hmm. which has a purpose. It's, yes. it's a good photograph. If, yes. you, if you put this on Instagram, maybe you'd have to like crop it and make it a little tighter. I think this image would do well, but I don't know that this fits into this genre, at least where we're going so far with it. If you're a car photographer, I don't know that you're gonna get hired to shoot car campaigns with this Based kind of this image. Alone. Okay, I mean, I understand I that. I still like it, it's I'm got not... a cool mood. I just, this is the type of image that I think, you know, would be the weaker shot in your set if you had, you know, Okay, so yeah, you're you're rating this at another from another angle. I'm looking at this simply from a photography standpoint. It happens to have a car in it. I feel like this is a really interesting, creepy looking shot that happens to have a car in it. You're saying if you take pictures of cars for a living, that's this our, may not fit in. That's what our critique the community is always about, though. I don't know. This has a place somewhere. I just don't know that if you had a printed portfolio and you sat down with a client. This is an image that's on uh, a car photographer's website under personal projects. <laughs> yeah, but when you go to personal <laughs> projects on most photographers' websites, it's the weirdest stuff. It's like a power line with some birds <laughs> flying, and you're like, and it's blurry, and you're like, what is this? I respect this guy, but why is... I agree. Community is going to 3. say... 3.0, look at that. 3.0. Well, All that's right. dead in the middle of... What was... Yeah, that's true. So, Patrick, your girlfriend has just moved down here. Yes. We you are guys like have been here for two Four days. or five days. Oh, has it been that long? Well, what is today, like Wednesday, and she came down Saturday? Okay. Yes, so the big move. Yeah? So that's a big transition for me. That's a big transition for her. It's mm -hmm. a big transition for us. Yeah, we, we all have live fourth, together if you guys uh, haven't. We have a fourth person in the house, <laughs> and now the guy to girl ratio is even. Yeah, luckily this house is so big and has so many different stories that, I mean, like you guys have your own living room. Yep. You guys have three bedroom, three bathroom, and a living room on your floor alone. Yeah. The other night you were watching garbage reality TV shows. I was editing, but it was on... Oh, so she, she was, was she watching. was watching. Okay, it, yeah. like I don't know. It's kind of it, I tell people it's almost like we live in an apartment complex. Yeah. Together, you feel like she's going to enjoy it here. Do you think she's going to get my biggest crazy? My biggest concern is that she is a teacher, and I'm concerned that she won't find a teaching job. And if she doesn't teach, I'm worried that she may not find anything that like fulfills her and she's bored. I can respect that. And uh, I keep thinking like there's so many people here that are retired 
and I keep putting myself in their shoes. Like, would I be bored if we weren't doing f-stoppers here? Yeah. So. All right. Well, we will let you guys know when uh, their relationship ends in a fiery breakup because she hates living with. I don't Katie. think it's going to turn into that. Okay. Hopefully not. Next up, are you ready to rate? This? Way to look at the positive. Yeah. Sorry. Um. Yes. Three, two, one. Two stars. We agree. I mean, this kind of re- reminds me of the Hyundai image. I feel like this is a, a, a step better, but because of the lighting and I feel like the camera's a little too close, so we're getting some pretty significant warping on the car. I, but mostly just the lighting. It just feels kind of like a snapshot again to me. I'm not going to say it's a snapshot. Obviously, we got some sort of composition, but it's just boring location, boring midday light. It's not doing much for me. I'm trying to think if the background was more interesting, would you want to raise the camera up to show more of it? Or do you want to shoot a little more telephoto to bring it into the foreground a little bit more? Now I got to go back and look at the... The lens and position of the camera is what I keep going back to. Because of course you could talk about the post-production and the color palette and the silver versus the blue and the sky and everything. but. To me, the fundamental thing that I keep going back to is just the composition and the, and the lens choice. Yeah, putting the car right in the middle of the frame, that's not helping either. I don't know. I, f- I feel like it needs some work. Community, 2.85. They like it more than us. So this is kind of touching on what I was saying with the other image where this is a very beat up car, but it has a very different mood. Yeah. This has like a stylistic choice. And maybe you would argue the other one did too. The other one just seemed more like a proper exposure in a grungy garage parking deck, you know? This one, it's like there's actual photography going on here in terms of lighting and and more post-production and that sort of thing. Why does this image feel like a miniature car to me? Is it a depth of field thing? You know what? I think that's it. I think think the... The motion blurred wall in the background is too much. Is so close to the car, it feels like shallow depth of field, but it's supposed to be motion blur. That's what's going on here. It's because it's a wide angle shot with motion with depth of field. It's so shallow. It's like this unnatural thing. Yeah. Like I mean, normally, when you look at a city, you see a lot of depth of field because everything you yeah. know. But when you make the depth of field look really thin. Like the tilt shift look, it just your eye starts to believe that this is a miniature set. And you also have a lot of blur in the front of the like the wheels, like the foreground is blurry, and then there's like this dust or this halo or the smoke that's on the wheels. It just it makes the depth of field feel like it's like right on the pass like the driver's side shoulder, and then everything is. So I just realized this is number seven. So congratulations, you won a free tutorial. Have we even rated this yet? No. All right, let's rate it. Three, two, one. Three stars, we agree. Um, I might put this on like a low three. Like, it's cool. The photographer knows what they're doing, but there's not enough going on and I feel like there's a lot of dead space here that if I was scrolling through a portfolio of cars, even if they were like this, like beat up cars, this could be a whole theme on your site, you know? I feel like I would stay on this this image shorter than what I'd probably want to. This doesn't keep me engaged long enough. Crop in a little bit and crop out the, the entrance to the tunnel because I feel like the entrance to the tunnel could be cool, but you can't even tell what's going on out there. I guess it's nighttime. If you crop- So something like that? Yeah. Doesn't that feel way stronger? Yeah. And that's what I was saying with the dead space. Well, the community likes it a little more than us. 3.63. Move on to the next shot. What was the number one image? What, what is our base rating? Highest rated image was a... The highest rated image was 3.8. So okay. I mean, this was close to the highest rated. All right, you ready? Yep. Three, two, one. Two stars, we agree. I mean, obviously, uh, you know, we've got somewhat of an interesting car. They're trying to do lighting, but first of all, it's not even a correct exposure between the car and the background. You know, like go ahead and just do a long exposure and complete darkness and get that background burned in better than this. 
But then when you look at the lighting on this car, a lot of the lights have been shot. It looks like from almost below upward. Like look at the look at the shadows that the top of the front bumper has on top of the bumper. That's very strange. You you light very few things from below. So I think what they've done here is they've lit this car multiple ways in different shots and then combined the shots in post, which is great. Like that's what a lot of people do. But they've lit the car from such weird angles that it doesn't really make sense and it just it kind of looks like a jumbled mess of light. Rather it's like than... when you light the face with a low candle and you get that horror lighting. There's yeah. situations where you can do that and it's great. But it's not a beauty shot. It's not a hero shot typically. Yeah. And like... if it is, it's for a horror movie mo movie poster or something. That's what they did with this car. They lit it in a less flattering angle. Yeah, and then they lit like the the roof of the inside of the car, but they didn't light the seats inside the car. So there's just weird decisions here. There's no light on the hood or the top of the car. Strange decisions overall with lighting and then the background so underexposed. I am not a big fan. And you'd also want this kind of moonlight feel that's hitting the foreground. You'd want that to translate more into the background. You'd want the background to also have this like blue wash if you were to balance this out. I know it's not balanced out, but yeah. you'd want that to feel like there was, you know, continuity there. Community agrees with us, 2.09. Are you ready? Yeah. Three, two, one. It pains me to give this a three. I want to give it a four. Um, there's just a couple of things. First of all, I love the concept. I love the blurry thing on the right, the fence post. Like you love that they blurred it, or you love well, the exact execution of it? Well, I like the concept. I like the idea that this car is blazing around this turn, and this photographer, you know, just captured it very quickly. But there's a few things that are just like one. Once again, I feel like this car is super warped. It 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 almost feels like the Batmobile. This car wasn't Front even is... photographed on this location. If you look at the size of the fence and then the size of that back wheel to the size of the front wheel, it feels like this scene the was shot, shot with, telephoto. You know, or, or even a 40 millimeters, but then the car was shot at like 20 millimeters and then shrunk and put down on this road. I don't know, it just something doesn't feel real to me. Yeah. Because the whole left of the, the hood of the car feels like it's towards the edge of the frame and being like pulled by the, the wideness of the field of view. Yeah, but then we're not getting that same... On the right side of the frame. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like the right side of the frame seems more zoomed in or it's, it's less distorted. Yeah. I feel like the, the fence is too blurry to me. Maybe. Or it's blurred in like a Photoshop kind of way. Like it's too predictable. I'd want to see like maybe the top part of it to be blurred a little less, but then it's blurred more as it goes to the bottom. Something about it. Yeah, I mean, it's obviously fake. And that's the thing. That's why I said I love the concept of this, but something about it doesn't feel real and, and just feels uh, retouched. The Well, the more I look at it too, the bottom of it has this radial blur kind of going from top to bottom at an angle. But then the post has this blur that's going more horizontal. Yeah. It's like the blurs aren't the same. And those little things, I think you'd really have to study this to like figure that out and to notice it, but subconsciously your mind picks up on it so quickly. Yeah. Because you're not used to seeing blurs go in different directions like that. Yeah. Community, 3.5. So last night, we had, I think, my favorite meal I've ever had. What? In Puerto Rico. Oh, okay. <laughs> I mean, I, it, it would be probably in the top 10 experiences of food. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can't easily remember every experience I've had. Some experiences are like with Alaya in Hong Kong or something, and it's like, that's just its own thing to begin with, or Singapore. Yep. But in terms of just like a normal, fancy 
cuisine where like you have a chef who's making you know a bunch of stuff. Last night was pretty incredible. So uh, people were recommending this restaurant called Marmalade in Old San Juan. It's an expensive restaurant um, and it's like fusion food, right? They have a little bit of everything. And so Katie and I went, we just happened to be in Old San Juan. We did no research on this restaurant. We were there with my parents a few months ago and we were wearing shorts on a t-shirt and we went into this restaurant and got food. We were underdressed then. Um, but since then, we went back with Katie's family. And then I've been telling you about it. I said, when you guys moved down here, yeah. we've we got to go again. So we had like 11 people, uh, friends you know, from Puerto Rico that we've made, come to this restaurant last night. And, and they, it seemed like they had two options. You could do like a chef's recommendation. Yeah, that's only for parties six or more. Okay. Or you order four, five, or six courses. That's like the only option. And then you can't just get an entree. No, okay. no. You must do four, five, or six courses, and uh, and then they just have a list of a bunch of different things. But they have lots of vegetarian options, which is great for my wife and I. Um, and then what, what did what did you get? What was your favorite? So dish? Kristen and I both decided we're going to get five completely different things. The only thing that overlapped is their their soup, which was their like flagship item. Yeah. I'm glad we both got that because that was my favorite thing that I ordered. Yeah. But she had some kind of lobster risotto and a couple other people at the table had that and I felt like that was the second best thing that we had. Mm. But then I had some kind of, I always complain about I can't find Mexican type food on the island. I had some kind of tamale with, uh, it was made with like yuca or some kind of root that's here. So instead of the corn that you would have like in a traditional tamale, they had this, this other type of starch. And it had no meat in it, so it was vegetarian, which was interesting, but it had the mole sauce and everything, and whew, that like, it wasn't exactly what I would have thought, but it hit the spot in a, in a really good way. Other than that though, I mean, I had some like halibut, we had uh, popcorn shrimp that was like a grilled, it was almost like a chili curry shrimp on top of popcorn. Literal popcorn. So when you think popcorn shrimp, you mm. think deep fried shrimp. This was large shrimp with popcorn underneath it. So that yeah. was really interesting. What was your favorite thing? The soup. The soup is the best. What was your second yeah. favorite thing? Um, maybe the dessert. Well, okay, so here's the thing. Both my wife and I are vegetarian, but I have this moral code that if someone else orders meat and they're about to throw it away, I will eat it because I love the taste of it. I'm sure meat is actually good for you. Um, to me, it's just like a moral animal thing. So but if the animal's already been killed and it's going to waste. Yeah, if it's going to waste, that's the most disrespectful thing. Like, you should eat it. So my buddy Voss ordered lamb, mm. which I should feel tons of guilt about eating, but he ate just a few bites of this dish, and I said, pass that over there. <laughs> it was so good. Yeah. It was so good. And it's been a long time since I've had that much meat. So... Uh, so if you ever come to Puerto Rico, you're probably going to be in Old San Juan. That's where everyone goes. That's where the yeah. cruise lines go. You have to go to Marmalade. And you probably need to make a reservation, right? Yeah. I'm or if you're a larger party. You know, yeah, it depends. We but, got there uh, at 536. Yeah. We were like the only ones in yeah, there. But, and then it packed out. It's, it's like a four-hour eating experience. So just because like, oh, we got there early and there were empty tables available, it's not like, oh, anybody could have just taken those tables. Mm -hmm. Because they might be able to do two dinner services per table per night at most. Yeah. If you got there at seven o'clock to eat dinner, you would like, that's the only, they can only serve food yeah. for that one table. And if you're on the cruise and you only have like five hours in old San Juan, <laughs> yeah, most exactly. of that time is going to be spent to the restaurant. Exactly. And save your money because it's super expensive. Okay. I don't know how to rate this image just because it's so different. Let's rate it. All right. And then we'll talk about it. Three, two, one. Three? Three stars. Now, I think I have come up with a crop for this that is exponentially better. You come up with a crop and show me. Like that. No. Um, I mean, we just totally get rid of the left side of the frame. <laughs> That's exactly what I did. That's exactly what I did. Yeah. Because um, the light on the left side feels so harsh and cheap, is the word you always like to use. 
it just shows all this texture in an area that your eye should never really be going towards. The other thing that's weird about this image is there's just no people in it. It's like you got access to this track at night and I want to see a crew or something like I don't they probably never race cars at night, do they? Oh yeah, of course they do. Would the scene be lit brighter than this? This just seems like super dark and hazardous to be <laughs> racing in this. But know. there's something about showing the left side of the frame with no people and it just feels like if you had a big production and you were shooting for Porsche and you were doing something for their race cars, you wouldn't you wouldn't shoot it. You'd you'd have something else going on in, in the left side of the frame, or you just crop past that. So something else that bothers me about this image is that horizontal white line on the bottom. It's not horizontal, but the vertical lines on the left are correct. So by cropping in. You can just completely crop past that white line, and I feel like it makes the image so much stronger. Well, that's an interesting thing with these racetracks is the vertical lines and the slopes and everything will be very unsettling for your eye, typically, because they aren't straight, right? Yeah. Would you put any more light on the spoiler back there, have, like, red light? coming up or something. I mean, yeah, if I had plenty of time, I, I would light the crap out of this image. I think this is a natural lit shot. I think it just happens to look this good right at a camera. Yeah. All right, community gives it 3.48, moving on. I have said some things on critiques that have made a lot of people mad. Uh oh. One of the things I have said is that I do not like the genre of cos cosplay. Okay. I do not like these kind of motorcycles. When I look at this, I just think of punk ass people driving this thing loud and disrupting everything and running me on the road. And, and when I see this, I get this connotation of that and not the beauty of the Ducati. And, and we have buddies who own Ducati, so I'm well, not gonna they're, say- They're douchey too. So when I see this image, I immediately like put all of this context on the type of person that drives this. And Man. they're not all like that. There's probably collectors and, and people who just like to take this out on the weekend and stuff, but this is, I don't know. What else, old man? They're always driving too close to my yard. I want them off my lawn. And you know the people in this neighborhood who have the stereo systems built into their golf carts and they drive up and down these roads blaring their music when I'm trying to enjoy the peace. I was just telling Kristen, we gotta get a stereo in this golf cart. <laughs> Cause it's like, it's so boring to drive at like 10 miles an hour and it's loud. Our golf cart has like the, you know, it's a gas, car and it's like you will become the most hated person in our neighborhood i don't want to like blast at 10 p.m i just want to like hear something while i'm driving podcast maybe some music you gotta you gotta get the electric golf cart we got the gas golf cart that's so loud to be able to hear a podcast or music you have to blast it you have to to hear yeah. it over the freaking motor all right let's talk about what are we talking about let's talk about this talking ducati. about how much i don't like these ducatis <laughs> Look, okay, it's, a, it's a 959, too. Oh, yeah, that's a good one. All right, let's rate it. Three, two, one. Three? I think I'm lowering it because of my <laughs> dislike for these. I, I, I feel like this is lit beautifully. I like the, the red background matching the red wheels. I feel like that's super cool. Yeah. Maybe my only thing that I have to say about this what do you think of the the strange shadows being cast by the handlebar? Does that bother you at all, or do you feel like it's fine? I, I mean, I never even got that far. I didn't see that. I feel like the every other shadow on this bike is nice and soft and smooth. And then because it seems like they lit it with multiple lights, it's, it's creating this strange, like, starburst um, shadow cast down on the bike. And it's just... It doesn't feel quite as polished as the rest of the bike is to me. Yeah. And then other than that, the yellow concrete, I do not like that. I would... Um, like cool it down? Yeah, cool it down, de you know, just pull saturation out of it or whatever. But like, I feel like it has this urine-y 
<laughs> tone to it that I do not like, especially with the I think the problem, the, the biggest problem is. I have with this, and I don't know if this is the photography, photographer in me talking or if the average person would even care or notice, but like it just feels like, oh, the easiest thing to do is put a red gel on a strobe and make the whole background red. I almost want to see it snooted and have some other color lights coming down and maybe the background's a little more complex and moody. I feel like the, the bike is lit so well, like you said. I mean, the highlights on the tires and everything look great, but then the background just seems like, oh, just gelled red light in the background. Yeah, I mean, I see what you're saying a little bit, but uh, to me, it's all about the bike. I feel like they've done a good job of not making the background too bright. Um, and so, I like it. Community, 3.47, right in between us. Out of all, not all classic cars, but somewhat affordable classic cars, I think this car might be my favorite. What is this? This is a 240Z um, Datsun, which I believe is Nissan now. I feel like this car is beautiful, and I have seen some restorations of this car that kind of modernize it a little bit. And like black on black versions of this car are so awesome to me, but I'm so afraid of just having an unreliable vehicle that I have. How much do you think this car would cost? In you, can, you, can buy, you can buy these cars for like eight grand in, in decent shape. And then, you know, in, you want to buy a car that's renovated. You could buy it for 20 up to probably a hundred and some thousand dollars for this car depending on what they put in it. But uh, I, I, occasionally I see this car around. I feel like this is a beautiful, yet somewhat affordable classic car that's different enough. You know, it's not the same yeah. Ford Mustang that you see everybody have. Are you ready to rate it? I think so. Three, two, one. I'm in between a three and a four on this again. Um, I like it. It's still, it still goes. It reminds me of that image that's you know in the parking garage where it's got this mood to it. I think it's lit better. It's definitely lit better, and I think it shows off the car better. It's not a horror movie poster, but I don't know. There's something about just seeing the back of the car, and I know you have to shoot the back of the car, but this feels like a hero shot more than it feels like a, a catalog shot that's just trying to show you what the back looks like. It feels like a movie poster. Well, I think, and that's the color grading too. Um, there's something about the highlights on the back that I just keep going back to the license plate. So I don't know if you could have just a hint more light on that back window from up above. I almost want to see a harder light coming from where the skylight is. You know what I would love if I could just easily take control over this image. <laughs> I think it'd be cool, because this feels like nighttime to me, other than the skylight. Yeah. So it's like, I want it to look like night outside that skylight, um, but who the hell knows how to do that? Um, oh, so you just like the top corner, replace that with a bluer tone or something that feels... Yeah, because it's weird, like the headlights are on, and there's fog in front of the headlights, which makes it feel like it's nighttime. And then you look up and you go, oh, it's day. So that's kind of strange. But anyway, community gives it 3.46, right in between. This us. image, before we move on, like it, it's starting to make me wonder, like, man, I kind of want to see some people in these shots. Like a guy or somebody walking towards... Maybe. May I mean, sometimes a person in the shot, if done right, can be super cool. But if done wrong, if they look goofy at all, I remember then we did a critique on, on cars before, and they had an old car like this, and they had some guy who was dressed like... I remember that shot, yeah. Really strange, and it was like the way the car was shot and edited and everything felt very retro, but then he, maybe he was dressed really modern, Yeah. and it was like something didn't feel right about exactly. it. Exactly. That was a very memorable shot. Yes, it was. Could it have been world class? No. Speaking of world class... Yep. What is this car? What is this? It's been chopped to hell. I want to say this is a Nissan GTR, but I don't even know. But they have destroyed it. 
I apologize to the photographer if this is your car, but you've destroyed this poor car. Oh, not with the photography, but with the actual upgrades and right, right up upgrades. And then you destroyed it with the photography. Are you ready? Yeah. Three, two, one. One star. We agree. I mean, this is the definition of a snapshot to me. I feel like this literally looks like an iPhone picture. Like, you know, you walk by a car and you just took a picture of it. I don't know what else to say. Well, tell me more about what they did to destroy the car itself. I, I mean, I'm not a big, I'm not a huge car guy, so I don't know, but it appears like they lowered the car, which is almost always a bad decision <laughs> for, for a car like this. They've added ridiculous front end and side skirt on it that I'm sure just hurt the performance and, uh, you know, stop it from going over speed bumps. <laughs> Like, this car literally would not be able to drive in our neighborhood. We have some of the biggest freaking speed, speed bumps, bumps in this neighborhood. Then imagine taking it off. out and then putting it on the, the highways here in Puerto Rico. Exactly. All right, community gives this 1.83, so they like it a little better than us. It's an interesting shot because uh, the car is actually wet. I wouldn't ever think to do that, you know. I'd be like, ah, we can't shoot today, it's raining. Yeah. But they have taken a really cool shot in the rain. I think I'm ready. Ready? Three, two, one. Four stars. We agree? This might be my favorite image. Really? Of the critique. Tell me what's going on at the very front end of the car. Um, the driving lights are on? What, what's going on with the edge of the car and that smoke? Oh, you just, the smoke's like overlaid a little sloppy. Yeah, it's just a little sloppy. But, um. What is going on with the, uh, the concrete there? It's like reflecting back something? It's like there's lines that you see, like parking spaces, but you don't see those parking spaces. You don't see those lines on the floor, on the ground? You see what I'm saying? No. You see like all of these lines that are like in this parking space? Oh, okay. What about it? It's just weird. It just looks like the... It's floating in the air. Well, it just looks like that concrete that's like a barrier so you don't drive off of this platform or wherever they're at. Yeah. It's reflecting something, which I don't know that concrete would do. But if it was glass, then it seems like it should be more transparent. But if it was glass, you should see those parking spaces on the ground in front of the car, right? So, yeah. Do you so see what I'm trying to... Yeah, there's something weird going on. I thought that there was a wall, a gray wall in front of this car. You know, yes. That's... A, a ways in the back. But when you look close, there's these white parking lines on what I thought was a wall. So now it's showing me like, okay, is the wall, does the wall begin much higher? I don't know, that's really weird looking. So I, if I were you, I would I would just retouch out those white lines because. It, oh, I see what you're saying. Because it's also that the water or whatever that is that's making a line. That looks like the beginning of the wall to me. Yeah, if you, if you retouch that out, then maybe your eye would say, oh my gosh, it goes way beyond, it's like an optical illusion. But, I mean, cool shot. Like I said, if it was raining for me, I would just give up and go, all right, we gotta do this another time. You have taken a car into a wet environment, given it such an interesting mood. I mean, maybe, maybe there's a lot of car photography in wet environments, but I don't recall seeing them. So, to me, this, and this car shot. always looks so sinister to me. Like it looks like, it looks badass. You yeah. know, I don't know that I I would ever buy the Lamborghini, but it's so angular and it's got all these vents and everything. And then to have the hint of like a Nordic scene or something, I know. it feels really cool. Would you put more brake lights or something in on this? I, I was thinking the exact same thing. It's weird that the side lights on the car are brighter than the brake lights. So yes, I want the brake lights to be brighter and I want to see the brake lights reflecting in the, the wet uh, on the bottom right. Yeah. 
And I think it would be cool too to add some headlights, like firing into that wall. And I think you could easily do that in Photoshop. How do you feel, since we've talked about this wall so much, how do you feel about cutting that wall out entirely and compositing more of the mountains and stuff in there? Like this thing's about to take off into like... I like that. Yeah, that could be really interesting. I think, I think this is my favorite image so far. The community disagrees with you. 3.45. I hate the community, man. Gosh. It's like people who drive Ducatis. So we've gone in a very different lighting style with this image compared to anything else we've seen. A little different. Are you ready to rate it? I think so. I don't know. Maybe I'm going to... Three, two, one. Three stars. We agree? I felt like a very low three. The I, more I, I look agree. at this, yeah, the highlights on the rear end of the car make it start to feel kind of wonky. And I, I feel like maybe I'd want a little fill just to show more shape. I agree. There's I, something about it that like when I first saw it, I was like, ooh, cool, like yeah. a different lighting style. Yep. But yep. the more that I look at it, and I'm like that thin line on the left bottom and then the big broad highlight on the right bottom, it just makes the car not feel symmetrical. Yes. My eye keeps going to that. There's a lot of highlights on this that I do like, like the rear view mirror, especially on the right with the, the logo up there. Ferrari yellow, like that's cool. But there's a lot of stuff on here that I'm just like, oh, it makes the car feel like it's not designed well or something. I agree. Um, I, I've seen incredible shots like this where you know you have some very dynamic lighting coming in from the side, lighting up details of these supercars. I think it can be done really well. This one is just okay. I still gave it three stars, but I'm in between a two and a three on this. Community, 3.31. You probably look at more car ads than I do. How many cars are intentionally shot in like really rustic warehouses? I'm sure it happens a lot, but does it happen more with photographers? I think, so. I think it does because, yeah, I don't think the average car manufacturer wants their cars to be seen like this. Yeah. That's not to say that you couldn't shoot them in these warehouses, but then you could just composite in other elements to make it look more polished or more exotic or I mean, more this, generic, it, like you're not sure where the car is. But I see a lot of cars on our community that are put into these really rustic, beat up. I mean, even if you go back to the Ferrari one, like that's kind of what I'm, I'm, the Lamborghini. This one, it's in a rustic concrete environment, but yeah. it's clean and it's, yeah. It's got a look to it that feels a little more polished, whereas I mean, this, this one... I mean, this literally looks like a trash pile is in front of the car. All right, are you ready? Yes. Three, two, one. Two stars, we agree. Um, I like the concept. I, I like the, the diagonal line that's kind of breaking the frame. Yep. But... I don't know, like the car just, and th this is, you know, you talking about you don't like Ducatis because of the people who drive them. I, I don't know the type of people who drive cars like this, but just when I see old cars with big wings and stuff, I just assume like that is a crappy car. <laughs> I don't ever assume, wow, I bet there's a huge engine under there. And I know there could be. I know this could be an incredible race car that's, you know, setting records, it's a sleeper. But I don't look at cars like this and I'm never impressed. I'm never impressed when I see a car like this from its physical. Man, we are gonna really piss off a yeah, lot of people. Sorry, We're gonna be like, you guys should never do car. We told you this on the last no, episode. No, we warned you. Never rate cars again. I blame Mike Kelly. Yeah, this is Mike Mike's Kelly fault. is responsible yeah, for this. Yeah, because I didn't watch the critique with you guys. But when David said something about a car critique coming up, I was like, how? How is this happening again? We, like, everybody yelled at us the last time we did this. So anyway, community gives this 2.98, so they like it more than us. So here's a great example of another location that is what I was talking about previously. Like it's, I wouldn't say this is rustic by any means, but it's, it's very well manicured. Everything's really pretty lines and cool concrete and this location is really cool are you ready to rate it 
Yeah. Three, two, one. Three stars, we agree. What is not making me want to get excited about this image? I'm trying to figure that out myself. I think it might be the lighting on the front of the car and the hood. Yeah. Because the back of it moving down the side looks really nice. Yeah. That's what it is. If you could have those highlights go all the way across and then have the hood kind of lit a little bit more too and the front of the car pop a little bit, I think this would, this could be move up to a four. Is there something weird too about the, um, it's not even that much space, but having the bottom left and below the car be as bright as it is, almost the brightest part of the whole shot, and then having that much dead space down there, when I when I crop in a little bit and push the car down, it feels better to me. There's something about having the brightest part of the scene be right below the car that makes it feel like the car doesn't have a shadow under it or something. And I know I know why. It's like the sunlight's coming from camera left and it's casting a shadow down and into this garage area. But something about it doesn't feel right to me. Do you also feel like the front seats feel like they're like pushed up? It does kind of feel like, like they're they're not in a driving position. It does feel like that. I mean, that's like super minor compared yeah. to the lighting and stuff, but. But I feel like this has a lot of potential, but it's just. What is this? It's like a Rolls Royce or something? Yeah. Um, but you gotta, you gotta get the lighting right on the front of the car. Does this type of car, again, I'm not, I don't know a lot about cars, but like the, the wheel, the, the, the wheels match this? These wheels look like some kind of high performance wheels, but then this feels like a luxurious cruising car. Is this like a race car? I don't know. I mean, this is the two door version of a luxury touring car. So I think this is supposed to be the sporty version of a Rolls Royce. Community, 3.19. Now this one begs the obvious question. Is this all in camera? I don't know any cameras that are capable of pulling this off. They have. It, it, is, it, is, it is interesting that they have used a post-production technique that you're probably familiar with. Based on the critiques everyone's given you on post-production, this is how like the halo look or the, the blur. This is when you take the, uh, is it the detail slider? The clarity. And clarity, and you move it in the opposite direction. I don't even think that's what's going on here. I mean, look at the people walking in the background. There's like a paint effect on them. They look almost rendered. It looks like what a rendering looks like where you need people walking around the location. <laughs> yeah, I want to give this one star, but I By don't definition, know that we can. because Your mom couldn't have created this without some work? I don't know how anyone can create this, but let's rate it a two, mm. three, two, one, two stars. Yeah, I don't know what's going on here, but it caught my eye, and I said, that's got to be in the critique. Well, Obviously, it's just a snapshot of the of the car. It's too wide angle, in my opinion. You're too close. The tire of the car, in many cases, when you take photographs of cars, you do turn the front wheels, but you turn the front wheels away from the camera so that you can see the rims better, not that, so that you can see more tread. And then... What the heck is going on with the paint effect in the background? How did they cut this car out? Like, does this photographer know how to use the pen tool, but yet still created this monstrosity? And also, they got a permit for this because they parked the car directly across traffic. So they had to have the road shut down for this shoot, which you would think if you're going to go through all that effort, you'd wind up with a better image. Maybe, maybe this has just been, this car has been cut out and then placed on some... Wait, that's background what I think plate. Happened. I don't think they shut down the street and got the permit. I don't either, but I, you know, I, I could also imagine this car doing a three-point U-turn <laughs> in the middle of the street and somebody running out with their phone and getting a snapshot. I mean, they do have a driver in there. 
So I don't know what the heck's going on here. Community gives it 1.73. So for those of you who didn't see Patrick's video, Patrick has been really sick. You've been at home getting surgeries and stuff. You have Crohn's disease that's been in remission for years, but it started flaring up again. Yeah. And when I picked you up the other day at the airport, you had this little lunch pail. And you said, I think this is the most expensive thing like I've ever carried in my hands. And you said it was worth $15,000. $15,000 of medicine, which is three applications. Okay, and what is this medicine? So this medicine that I'm about to start is Humira. You've probably seen TV ads for it. And it is a little pin with medicine in it, and there's a needle in here, and you just self-administer it. And so to start this process, you have to take a starter dose, which is two of these pins. It used to be four, four injections. Now it's down to two, and then the second, you know, two weeks later, you take the last dose, which is one of these pins, which is a double dose. So it's $15,000 month one, $10,000 month two, $5,000 Not quite, it's it's 15,000 the first month and then it drops to 5,000 every month afterwards. For potentially the rest of your life, $5,000 a month. Until this drug stops being effective for my condition, which could be a year, it could be 15 years, like I don't know yet. And thank goodness for insurance. Yes. Because your insurance is covering almost all of it? It's covering all of it. I had to hit my deductible this year, but maybe in a future episode, I'll explain how I'm actually somehow making money taking this drug and getting most of my insurance for free. Yeah. Um, which maybe I'll explain that when it happens in, in February of next year. But um, yeah, so they sent me this little test kit. There's actually no medicine in here. There's no needle. But you essentially take this thing apart I did that backwards, but you're supposed to do you know a certain way. And then I will take this and in, inject that into my stomach. Good Lord. And I have to do two of these, and then I will do one of them from there on out. But um, basically, I delayed my treatment, and I filled up my script, and I've waited a year having this. That's why I was carrying it in the lunch pail that's refrigerated, because yeah. this medicine has to be refrigerated. So anytime we travel now, if we're going on another photographing the world with Elia. I have a full two extra pins available or I will in the next but couple days. But you have to keep those on ice as you travel around. Like they yeah. go bad. Yeah, they, they, if they heat up, you have to then use it. So it has to be within the window of like your treatment. Wow. So I'm gonna always have to carry that little pouch. But by delaying my treatment, which was a, a suggestion somebody gave me online through the video, they said, delay your treatment. Don't fill your prescription and then a month later, refill your prescription and then you will be behind schedule but now if you need to travel anywhere, you have two extra pins. So I don't have to worry about traveling for two or three weeks. I can now travel for like five weeks. Wow. So well, I will I start this. works for you. I will start this in the next couple of weeks. And then by the next time we do one of these critique the communities, I will hopefully know if this medicine is working or not. All right. Well, we'll keep everybody updated. I'm probably going to make another video for our channel too that just describes the whole thing. I think I'm going to take the injection and film it and everything. So. Okay. If you're into that sort of thing, yeah. stay tuned. I won't watch that video. Okay, uh, are you ready? I think so. Three, two, one. Five. I, I could have gone so. four. I was thinking three or four. I mean, I like the lighting four, on this. I could do four, three. I am offended, sir. Just I can't give it. I can't give it a five because I don't like all these leaves. See, I kind of like the leaves. I feel like if you're gonna do the leaves, they should be, you know, fall leaves that are placed perfectly. This just looks like, from a distance, it looks like trash or something, or starfish or You look debris. like trash from a distance. This shot looks awesome. First of I'm all- I'm not putting myself in my portfolio, though. <laughs> Touche. I do like the lighting on the car. I do like the camera angle. There's a lot that I like about it. It's still a little weird that this car just magically appeared on a beach with no tire tracks and you would even have the car. This looks like a Charleston beach, you know, like the parking lot with the hard sand. I don't know. I think it's really cool. I feel like the lighting on the car is awesome. Maybe you could say, you know, the, the, the retouching on the sky is a little much, but this flat ground with these leaves, I almost feel like they are perfectly placed. Um, I, I agree. It, I, I could imagine if this was, you know, a professional photo shoot for this car company, I could imagine them choosing every leaf perfectly and setting it down so that, you know, there's not any crunchy, grungy leaves. But I, I don't know, maybe four is the right answer, but this is one of my favorite shots of the critique. I do like the tone of it and everything, but what car is this? 
Uh, it's a Charger or a Challenger. I, I can't remember the names. Community, 3.67. Oh, and is this our last image here? Our last image. Felix Hernandez, thank you for always submitting pictures to our critique. I feel like he's always getting in these critiques. Um, in case you guys don't know, he does lots of miniature stuff. So he's, he's like hand painting and making these sets. And uh, he, he uploaded a few images to this critique, um, but this one stood out to me, so I, I chose this one to make it. Are you ready? I am. Three, two, one. Four stars, we agree. I mean, it's an amazing shot. I feel like what might put it over the edge for me is I might want to see a little bit more detail in the land like some trees, make it look like the woods or something, but it just kind of feels like this van is being sucked up by an alien spaceship if the van was on the moon. Yeah. You know, it doesn't really feel like an earthly location anyway. When I saw this image, I didn't place it being lifted. I placed it being underwater. Oh, really? Because it has like a lower gravity feel to it, you know? And then I was thinking, should there be like fish or coral or something well, okay. else? Okay, so th yeah, now the now light, I'm The light just that. looks very similar to what you'd see if you're a diver, you know? It's That's got that. true. Um, I do want to step back and say I gave this a four, but because I said this on a previous image, this doesn't really fit the automotive genre. Like, you're not going to get hired. Like, if we go back to... Should you put this in your portfolio to get hired by, you know, car advertising, if that's kind of where this critique fits? Sure. I don't think that's the genre that he's, you know, of playing course. to. Yeah. But it's still done so well that this is more, I know people, I think there was just an article in F-Stoppers today, like things that you hate photographers say, and okay. one of them is fine art. Everyone classifies their works. But this truly is in that realm of fine art. Like, I don't. It's, it's like, done yeah, to... it's a modern take on finding sure. Yeah. Well, the community... Where, do you, where does he find all these? Do they make miniature little vans and stuff like oh, this? Oh, uh, yeah. You can get miniatures of every car. And what's cool is, like, he's ripped off the wheels and, like... I know. He's it's added like... things. Like, it looks like there's boards that are just, like, screwed into the side of it or something. Like, when you really look at the details, that's what makes it look so unique is... We had another uh, photo in here that we thought could have been a miniature car because of the depth of field. Well, you know, so I'm now trying to figure out what what is going on in this shot. Because when you zoom into the van, is this snow on the van? Like, I'm starting to think of the underwater thing now. Especially if you zoomed in a lot and you, you can't really see the beam. Yeah. It does kind of feel like it's like being taken off the bottom of the ocean. So... Well, it also, it I starts, really the more understand. I zoom in, the more I feel like it looks like a river back there. Like it feels, you know, and you wouldn't have a river underwater, really. I mean, you'd have a trench or something. But I don't I, know, that's, I, what's kind of cool about this type of work is that the more you look at it, the more you put your own feelings into it. Maybe. Because I don't know, maybe he would say, I never thought of it being underwater. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I didn't until you said it, but now I'm like, why, why is there snow or snow? sand all over it uh, so i don't really know what's going on but it's a cool shot and the community likes it a little less than us at 3.63 and that wraps up this critique <laughs>